Spain, the 15th century. There being Jews in Spain since the destruction of the Second Temple. In the year 711, with the conquest of the country by the Arabs, tens of thousands of Jews came to settle here and serve as a bridge between the enlightened East and the rather retarded West. During the period known as the Golden Age of Spain, there flourished a very rich Jewish religious life. Masterpieces of Jewish philosophy and mysticism were written, but rabbis were also involved in secular poetry, scientific research, medicine and astronomy. In the year 1492, all this was going to change. We have three months to leave the country or convert to Christianity. It is impossible. We've been living in Spain for centuries and we've never caused any problems. Let him speak. It's a royal decree. Read it for yourself. The Inquisition must be behind this. That cursed Tokamada. Ever since he converted to Catholicism, he's brought us only troubles. By order of their gracious majesties, King Ferdinand of Spain and Queen Isabella of Castile, it is hereby decreed that on the 1st of August in the year of our Lord, 1492, all Jews or members of the Hebrew nation shall be prohibited from remaining on the sacred soil of Spain. Those Jews living in the country shall also have to leave and abandon all their goods, dwellings, lands, commerce, furniture, 
and especially their gold to the Spanish crown. Nevertheless, they shall be allowed to join the ranks of our holy Lord and convert to Catholicism. After the aforementioned date of August 1st, all Jews found on sacred Spanish soil shall be condemned to be burned in the public square. The Holy Inquisition shall be empowered to execute this decree. choice. We'll have to leave everything and go far away from here. And where will we go? I don't know. Wherever they take us. Meaning where? I don't know, my son. Maybe Portugal. But they're also Catholics. The Inquisition is there too. But their king has always been good to the Jews. And he promised us asylum. That's right. Yes, and so did the King of Spain. And look where we are today. You'll see, it'll take just the tiniest thing. I don't know, an agreement between Portugal and Spain. And the King of Portugal will soon change his tune. So where do you want to go? I don't know. To the other side of the Mediterranean, where the Muslims are. I get it. We can get there very quickly. Well, Tangiers is only a few hours away by boat from Gibraltar. They're also a more refined people. Oh, I know they appreciate poetry, science, and architecture. They've always treated us with respect. They consider us the people of the book. And they'll treat us like dimmies, second-class citizens. Oh, they'll tolerate us for a while, but we'll never have the rights that they do, and certain professions will be closed to us. And do you think it's better where the Christians are? Where do you want to go? To France or Germany, where every three years they have to move in order not to be massacred? I prefer the Ishmaelites. Well, at least we'll have very famous personalities that have worked with them, like Maimonides, Yehuda Halevi, Ushmuel and Agid. And with the Christians of Spain, didn't we also have very important personalities throughout the last 500 years? But when it comes to the interests of the state, the leaders couldn't care less about our, our friendship or their own past promises. Nevertheless, the Muslims have always treated us better. That's in the past. Times have changed, and the news we hear from Morocco is not very encouraging. There are rumors, and a massive influx of new immigrants could only arouse the animosity of the population against us. It is out of the question to go to any country where the church can track us down. If we have to go to the Muslims, we might as well go to the Turks. They have a large and important Jewish community there. And they've always been in very close contact with their brothers in Spain. By the Ottomans? Yes, the Ottomans are spread throughout the Arab Empire. They'll probably need people to govern or administer their new empire. Well, certainly won't trust the conquered populations. On the other hand, they don't mistrust us. In fact, they appreciate us. This could be an opportunity. Perhaps that's where we should go. There is also the North, by the Protestants, especially in Holland. They say the Jews are welcome there, and you can do a lot of business with them. That's where I want to go. There's also Russia, in the East. There's a province called Poland. 
It just gained its independence and it's looking for educated people to help it run the country because it's composed mainly of peasants. And the doors are open to the Jews there. In Russia? But aren't the people there barbarians? If you want a more refined people, there's also Italy. But there are also Christians there. Yes, but the country's divided into many small states with varied interests. And the Jews would be well treated there. Yes. And they say that some are directly under the protection of the Pope himself. It's true. They even have about a dozen Jewish printing presses. Really? Why, well, that's almost as many as in Spain. Yes, it's a prosperous community. They're in the ports and doing well in business. And your friends? What are they doing? Even if they have to leave everything, some of them have decided to go all the way to Eretz Yisrael. That would be an idea. No, it's too dangerous. Why not? Every day you pray that God bring us back to Zion. And here, today, when you've got nowhere to go, you're being chased out of your country. Well, this would be a wonderful opportunity to go back home. Besides, no other country wants us anyway. Don't be ridiculous. There's nothing there. The communities, they can't even develop themselves. They live in constant poverty. Well, that's because until now there were only individual attempts like Nachmanides or Yehuda Halevi. But now we are many. Oh, why, I think this could be an extraordinary incentive to the community. So we could be strangled by a Saracen like poor Yehuda Halevi? <laughs> no, thank you. Well, sometimes the population of Jerusalem is, is under Christian rule and sometimes it's under Muslim rule. But it's always the Jews they start up with. Now, if the Ottomans were to drive out the Mamelukes from Eretz Israel, then we'll see. And you, Antonio? You haven't said anything yet. Why should I? When I listen to you, it seems that in the end there's nowhere to go anyway. We may as well stay in Spain. Idiot! Do you want to be burned at the stake? No, not at all. But you have to keep up with the times. And today, everyone's Christian. What does that mean? That you're ready to convert? If I have to, why not? No. They're talking about exterminating us, and you want to join them and become one of them? You want to break the chain which links us to the exodus from Egypt until now, despite two exiles? What difference does it make anyway? We have to think of survival. And the problem with all of the solutions you've presented comes from the fact we're Jewish. We may as well not be. If that's the case, then, if you're ready to cut yourself off from your people and your family, then you're no son of mine anymore. And your future doesn't interest me. You have nothing left to do in this house. anymore to abandon everything and start all over in a strange country. I would rather stay here. But that's madness. And it's not madness to go off into the unknown, just like that, without anything? Do you think it'll be easy for me to leave all the fortune we have here, this house, all the property we've accumulated over 500 years? 
They'll get nothing. Nothing. I'll be smarter than them. We'll be like Kristen in front of the rest of the world. But at home, in our basement, we'll remain Jews and we'll practice in secret. Nobody will know anything about it. Do you think it's the first time we came through such a crisis? It'll pass. Same as in 1391 in Seville. And how long do you think you can keep up this pretense without being discovered? Today, Torquemada finds favor with the Queen, but it won't always be like that. And don't forget, we have important personalities in the entourage of the King, like Don Isaac Abravanel. And then the Muslims might come. And then I'll be able to come out of hiding, I won't have lost my fortune, and I won't be exiled in a strange land. But that's no life. Hiding out all the time? Yes. But the life of a wandering Jew and a pariah that you are prepared to take on is not any better. By wandering round the world, you are risking extinction. No, Mother. By disguising yourself as a Christian, it is you who risks extinction. For we Jews, no matter where we go, we have a lifeline which sustains us always. Our Torah. The self-same Torah which kept us from disappearing after the Babylonian exile and after the Romans drove us out of Jerusalem to scatter us to the four corners of the earth. Our clothing may change. The melodies of our prayers may differ and so might our customs. But our Torah remains the same, unchanged. And as long as we keep it, we will never disappear, despite the inconsequences and the vagaries of history. Have you two finished arguing yet? Because all I know is that this meal around this table is perhaps one of the last we are ever going to have. In a few days, we're going to have to make some decision, and only God will know what will become of us. So please, please let me enjoy this moment with those I love. Come, eat the food before it gets cold, and let's pray to God for guidance. Abba, what about a devatura? Thank mm -hmm. you.
Thank you.